Thank you very much. And we ask you to please remain standing. Please remain standing and let's administer the oath. So you lay your left hand here and raise your right hand. I secret dramatic corner to solemnly swear that my testimony I have come to give to the TRC of Liberia is the truth and nothing but the old truth. So help me God. So it is good morning and welcome. On behalf of the Commission, we want to thank you very kindly for positively responding to the invitation of the Commission to come and support the work for peace and reconciliation in our country. As you know, after a very long period of conflict, the parties to the Accra Agreement, of which uh, your institution was a signatory, agreed that Liberians should have the opportunity where we can freely express ourselves, review the past, learn from the mistakes of the past, and then find a way to move forward. And we at the TRC, we find it to be in line with the saying of our old people that you have to sit down on the old mat to plot the new one. And so basically, this process has been going on, and we are very happy that you have come today to share your experience, to explain your role, and to tell us what you think about peace and reconciliation, and if possible, to advance some recommendations to the Commission. Because you were involved as uh, the leader of one of the factions, and you participated in the elections, the Commission thought that you'd be a good person to come and help us understand the past. So it was against that background that we invited you to come and share with us. So we say thank you, and you are most welcome. Thank you. At this time, I will take the opportunity to introduce the Commissioners to you. And after that, then you will move into your presentation. You may say a little bit about yourself, yeah. if you care to, and then uh, you may remain seated, or you can even use the podium at the back. The choice is here. At the end of the panel on the right is Commissioner Sheikh Kafuma Kone. Next to him is Commissioner Per Brown Bull. Next to him, to her, is Commissioner Umu Sila. And then immediately at my right is Commissioner Dede Dolope. To my left is Commissioner John Stewart. And I am Jerome Verdier. We say thanks for coming. You are most welcome. It's all yours. Thank you. The speaker still not working. Huh? Chairman and members of the TRC, members of the international, com international community, fellow Liberian ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted and honored to appear before you today as a major actor and a stakeholder in Liberia. 
Since I assume the leadership of law, a movement that was organized by Liberians that were forced to leave their country of birth as a result of this potted and tyrannic regime headed by Mr. Charles Taylor. A war crime inductees standing trial in the hick for crime against humanity. I am also moved that the process I helped to put together in Ghana in 2003 is now yielding. The expected result as it will lead to the positive healing of our catastrophe in our country once and for all. As I stand here today before God and men, having sworn to the Holy Quran, I now assure you that I am going to sincerely and categorically state my involvement and my role in a war that I participated as a result of necessity and considered by us and many well-meaning Liberians as a necessary evil, an evil that eventually usher in a participatory democracy. This country has been obtained for since its foundation some 161 years ago. Before deliberating further, we would like to express our deepest sympathy to those Liberian and foreign friends that may have been harmed during the entire process. As these events were never sanctioned by any well-meaning Liberian that was in leadership, as for every one of you know that law as a resistant movement did not target any specific tribe or group in the execution of the war, as this can be anticipated authenticated by International Contact Group on Liberia, ICGL, report on Liberia in 2003. But we are convinced that war in any form or shape always has side effect. Mr. Chairman, members of the TRC, and fellow compatriots, this commission was created by Liberians and aided by international peace builder as a medium of confession and a place to ask for forgiveness for the betterment of our holy matrimony. As I stand before you, I am under obligation to say nothing but the truth and set the record straight as opposed to a previous speaker who gave distorted information about himself and the organization. I shall deal with the details of these distortions during the question and answer period. On the 1st of December 2000, the fighter of LARD, under the command of the, of the Chief of Star, General Charles Dan, the late, wrote a resolution denouncing the Mohammed Jumande leadership, thereby making me the leader of the organization. Prior to my ascendancy as a leader, I previously served as an executive member. I decided to accept the responsibility in order to be part of history, a positive history that has transformed our country, our country for the better, where all of us as Liberians will return home in dignity from prolonged. Thank you.
Sincere apology for an Certify as displaced or refugee the same way. Yeah, but why would somebody think that way if everybody is free to come to the country and there's no, we don't have problem, we have democracy in place, we have a peaceful nation, and why would anybody think that they are being stopped from coming here? Everybody is free to come to their country. This is what we fought for, and everybody is enjoying that. And you see people coming from America all over the world coming back home every day. So. Nobody will have the cost of regrouping or want to come back home. You I'm not, I, I was not talking about only me. I'm talking about over 500,000 people that could not come. You made mention of a speaker 
who previously appeared before the commission and you say he gave distorted information about himself and the organization. Who are you referring to? And Joe what Wally. was the distorted I did call his name. Pardon me? I did call his name. I said Joe Wally. Joe Wally. And what was the distortion? Yeah, he was, he was saying that he talked to an American a British captain on a subtle love phone. And I was there. We didn't witness that. So I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't witness that. So, yeah. You said that you led the organization from Vonjima, Lofa County, to the capital city of Monrovia. Can you tell us when you took over the leadership and what was the organization at the time? Where was the organization at the time and when you took over the leadership of the organization? I, I told you that I took over the organization 2000. I'm from Fungemo. And the previous leadership were able to take the organization to Fungemo. And I took it from Fungemo to Monrovia. You also said that You stay in the bush to have, you were in the bush when there was an attempt to replace you once. Now, let me quote just what you said. August 22, 2008, when Mr. Joe Wallet appeared before your honorable body in this same hall, and said that they planned while we were still in the bush to have me replaced once we had entered Monrovia. Their actions and utterances at the time were inimical to the smooth implementation of the most important components of the peace process. Are you saying that the plan was correct, that the intent was to remove you from office, but was inimical to the process? Exactly so. <laughs> what would be the reason of changing a leader when the war is over, when we are in Monrovia, when we are discussing this army? And people went against me only because I was on track. People went against me only because I wanted peace, and wanted the democracy, and I wanted this army, and people didn't want that. You made mention of invitation received from the Interfaith Mediation Council. I know you are referring to the Interreligious Council of Liberia and that of Sierra Leone. Is that one you talk now? Yeah, you can attest to that because you are in Freetown. Is it the same meeting where you, your representative, were also able to meet with the ECOWAS parliamentarian. Exactly. And our position will be very clear. There are many areas where finger of accusations have been pointed at as acts perpetrated by your organization. In answering to a question propounded to you by the chairman, you said you were not in the battlefront, but you were in Vanjuma. So I'm asking, 
I'm asking you questions whether you are aware of a massacre that allegedly took place on the 9th of June 2002 uh, where General Ofori Deer, alias Iron Jacket, is reported to have massacred young men and women in Bopulu because they were accused of being government sympathizers? That was not reported to me. Uh, I never heard that. Because we were not targeting anybody. We had a lot of former government soldiers in Vonjima. Some of them were even my bodyguard. And we were not targeting anybody because you fought for Chastela. Our objective was for Chastela to leave. It is also reported that your men and women in arms were engaged in forced labor, forcing civilians to take arms and ammunition from one area to another, as well as from Guinea to Liberia. What do you have to say about this allegation? I'm not aware of that. From Guinea to Liberia, I'm not aware of that. Civilians were not coming to Guinea. So I'm not aware of that. But did you ever heard of similar thing going on? No, I never heard about that. The boys have vehicle, they have vehicle and they were transporting their own arm and ammunition. It is also alleged that your men were engaged a rampant looting of civilian properties and forcing them also to take those law to carry it from place to from Guinea, from Liberia to Guinea and from Guinea to Liberia. I'm not aware of that. Uh, the, un <laughs> the only report I got was the football incident and people took rice and they, and they gave it to the civilian. It was not even so. That's the only report I got. Arrests were taken from the Freeport and were given to civilians at the Bushwa Island. Some were taken to Bombay for the people to eat because the people were hungry. Was Lord Order Hello audience. Yes. If you're walking out, please do that quietly. Can you tell us what was the composition of law fighters? Confrontation? Yeah, composition. What Com have, you have uh, foreign nationals, you have Liberians. No, no, you no. Have <laughs> no, earlier already comprises of Liberian. Yeah. And were Liberian that wanted to come back home. It is alleged that Kamanjor from Sierra Leone were a major player in your fighting forces. Commander could not, could not help their own country. How would they help us? We, we, help, we dissolved the LARD because the LARD base was in Liberia. And we dissolved the LARD base in Liberia. And Commander couldn't handle that. How would they help us? We didn't need any help from, from Commander. Huh? You took off on the Holy Quran, which is the the Holy Scripture of Islam. That I know. And I know you are aware of the dynamic, spiritual dynamic force of uh, the Quran. Are you telling us that what you say in your statement and the answers you have just given are all true and correct? And true? true and correct. Thank you. Mr. Tamate Kone, good morning. I'm Commissioner Pearl Brampu. You said you joined LERD as a leader in 2000. 
But from our information in the first, uh, one of the founders alert, they told us how you became the leader. Uh, there was one, Mr. Jumande. Are you aware of Mr. Jumande? Again? Yes. He was one of the leaders first, yes. and yes. you succeeded him, right? Y yes. Can you tell us a little, a little more about Mr. Jumande, who he was, and what role he played with Lord in the formation? And could you please tell us? Yeah, I won't tell you much. Jumande is alive, and I think he's available. And I can tell you, I succeeded him. That's all you know about him. Yeah, he. Okay. Yeah, that's all. You, you are aware that he was one of the brain in terms of bringing in the money? Yeah, he didn't bring money to me, but he brought money, I think, to the organization. I wasn't chairman at that time. Yes, but the organization is not Sekou Damante Kone. Yeah, but... We want to realize that the organization made you. Yes. Uh, exactly. You are aware of Asha Kone? Yeah, I know Asha Kone. Who is she? And what relationship she bears to you and the, and the organization? Say that again. What relationship she bears to you and the organization of LERD in its formative years, 1999 to 2003? Yeah, she was also an executive member of LERD, mm -hmm. and she used to be my wife. Okay, she used to be, so you know, Lord, she's your ex-wife. Yeah, she's my ex-wife. All right, the, the facts revealed, and that's why you can say whether or not that it was Asha Kone who after who gave Lord money and, and support that the organization of Lord, the top people wanted Lord, I wanted her to be the leader. But because of the tradition that she said, well, you know, for our tradition, give it to my husband. Is that true? Yeah, I was not part of that, and law were not dealing with traditional things. And I can tell you, Asha was an executive member of law. She played a major role. But she I, played a major role. She played a major role. But and I told them to give it to you. No, we have not come to that. The fighter under the leadership of Charles, they officially wrote a resolution. Under the leadership of Charles? Charles thing. Okay. Jumande, as a chairman, Charles then, as a chief of staff, wrote a resolution addressed to me mm -hmm. as a, appointed me as chairman. Now, could you just, before we go a little further, uh, could you just tell us uh, what was your role as chairman? Because, you know, you talk here, but we, you really haven't told us your real role in this thing. So could you please tell us, as chairman for Lord during that period, what was your role? And where did you travel? Where did you go? As the chairman, please tell us your role. As a chairman, I used to live in Fonjama to administer most of the activities of LERD. The militia, the military, as well as the executive administrative? Yeah, the executive administrative you know, didn't want to come to Vonjema. And some of them were in Conakry, some of them were in Sierra Leone, some of them were in Ghana. And I was in Vonjema because I wanted to make sure Chancellor is out. I was very okay. determined. All right. I was very courageous. I was very right. determined. You are very committed. Do you know, as a leader and the chief administrator yeah. and the head of the military and all, yeah. do, you, do you know your commanders? And the different places they were fighting, they were posted to get Taylor out. Yeah. Because I, he was in a mansion, a secretary mansion, White House, or White Flower. The chief of staff of the army was there to monitor the army. And I kept talking to him that, look, make sure don't target anybody. Even if anybody surrounded to you, leave them alone. We want Taylor out. And that was our objective. But do you think, do you think that's what they did? That's what they did? Yeah, but... Anybody who did anything, I think you have the power, you have some authority. Let her come here and tell her. Okay, anybody, yeah. the reason why we are asked this question, mm -hmm. because we have put you now mm -hmm. in the center of everything. You are the leader, as you said, mm -hmm. 
You say, I asked you what were your functions. Yeah. You were each over the generals and everything. Yeah. Your objective was to get Charles Taylor or other Monrovia yeah. as well, at either to his house or the surrounding wherever he is. Yeah, but I place you here, the witness, on July, on January 8, 2003. In fact, Reverend Jared Meyer Walker, superintendent, I think he's former now, superintendent of Lord Carey Mission testified on the first day of opening live over Radio 2 and said that Lord used uh, the La Baptist Mission that was formed in 1907 for boys and girls. That have been almost a, a hundred years now. You use, Lord used the facility La like Mission to store the army mission as an army base as number one. Amre they burned down the administrative building that was worth 100,000 US dollars, and people were killed. Now, in view of that, I'm sure as the chairman for uh, a head of LERD, you are aware of the international violation of international humanitarian law that you should not go to schools to use school buildings, to use students, and, and for, for to store your armory. So are you aware of the international violation not less than the Liberian violation? Are you aware of that? Did you tell them about that? I'm not aware. And also I can tell you. You're not the, aware? Yeah, if a minister, if a minister carry on corruption, the president is not liable. Okay, he that. brought us photos. Mr. Damate, yeah. Connect. My photo? He brought fo that your photo. You mm -hmm. now we put you as the leader. You came here and you said you were the leader of Lair Lair, yeah. and you gave the period for which you serve. Yeah. And you gave what was your objective. I now mean, he wrote he presented to us yeah. pictures of the place. He presented the skulls. And the administrative billing is done. Not only that, he presented also the letter that he wrote to that was published in the newspaper for public knowledge. Was that so in the He had a letter that you are reading now. I'm saying to you, this is your first time hearing I it. I didn't receive that letter. Is this your first time hearing that? It was never reported to me. I'm telling you the chief of staff will be the best person and I haven't been to Lakiri and nobody told me that the chief of staff will be the best person to explain that. All, all right, the chief of staff will be the best person for the liability for you who they had and you and know about it, they never the heard head, about it. The head will not always be responsible for everything. Everybody is answerable for your own thing. Huh? The president is not responsible for minister mistake. I submit to you, uh, huh? Mr. Connor, you okay. just proclaim that you were the head of LERD. Audience, please. You yeah. gave the period and... Early R.O.D. came, just... came to put democracy into place and everybody had their own function in the organization. This was not a dictator organization. Everybody has a right. Everybody has a function. We have an executive member that takes decisions together and nobody okay. can answer questions for nobody in this organization. And well, we fought for democracy, and, and you know, when you introduce democracy, you don't impose anything on somebody for somebody else. Democracy time. is different from the rule of law. Yeah. All right. Uh, your chief of staff may be responsible, whoever responsible, but they have something called the principal and the uh, authority. Okay. The next. But who knows whether that play didn't get burned in 1990? Is there any proof? That why the chief of staff is the best person because I was not, I wasn't there. A war being loaded around here since 1990. Mr. Conner, yeah, he, 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 the the thing there, the property there, and he brought pictures. And if you say this is your first time hearing, yeah, it's unfortunate it. that none of your people told you that since January 8 when he testified. Secondly, uh, we observe also. A, Witness testified here in this Centennial Pavilion on who is um, a dog say that Lord had a marking game and the location where they testified where it occurred and even the one of your 
That's why I ask you whether you know your generals and you know your officers. Because if you know your officers, and if they tell you something, you'll be able to say that is my officer. Not in a way that the Lord rebels attack Artington and put most of the residents outside of their houses. The rebel told them to play a game with their lives. He said they were going to prepare a paper and anyone who choose will be a lucky ticket. That means if you choose one number, the odd numbers, that means you will die, they will kill you. If you choose the even number, then they will mark you. So they get you to mark you so they can go to show to tell her what law has done. So this particular witness got the number to mark and the marker on her chest, all over her chest deep. And she sat right there and testified and showed the marks. You know, the camera took it up and it was live. So are you aware of that? And the person who did it was one cassette from Lord. Even she was able to identify one of the, the persons who did it. So are you aware that your people were also playing these games of marking people and if you take odd number they will kill them? I'm not aware of that. <laughs> and, uh, it's so good she can identify the cassette and it will be, cassette will be the best person to come there and testify that. Audience, please. Audience, please. Mr. Hearing Officer, just give me a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, for the very last time, for the very last time ever, if we hear what we heard again, this session will be suspended and henceforth we will hold the hearings in camera. And attendance will be by invitation only. You have to go to TRC and get an invitation before you come. If we hear that outburst again, that's what will happen. Because it appears that we come to crash here ourselves. You come to enjoy yourself. You don't come to listen and respect the man on the stand. We will not tolerate that. If that happens again, this is notice to the entire public. We will come here or we stay at our offices and do the hearings. You have no role to play. If you have to come, you go to TRC, you get a pass before you come here. The choice is yours. Mr. Witness, my deepest apology for that interruption. Thank you. Mr. Witness, uh, apparently you were the chair of LORD, but you were not aware of really what was going on, according to your answer. However, were you aware of who were some of your members, if I call them? Are you aware of Ase Nyambo as the director of war? Were you aware, do you aware of him, know him? Yes, I know Ase Nyambo. He was as director of war, Ase Nyambo. General Philip Kamara, were you aware of him? Are you, do you know him? Yes, he was a logistics officer. Where General Charles Den. He was former chief of staff, yes. the late chief of staff. Colonel Morris J. Dolly. Francine Jakate. And Abraham Kita, you are aware of them? You know them? Yeah, some of them. And they serve in a position when you were chairman? Yeah, but I see you never was not director of war when I was chairman. What, what, was was the, what was the position of I say Yenebo? What was his functions in Lord? No, he was director of war under the German Day administration. I met the structure there. Okay. Now, you said that the objective of LURD was to get Charles Taylor out of the mansion. But, Mr. Joe Wally, in his paper, he, he gave that as an uh, anti-movement, uh, uh, and he also said something as not to get Tar Stiller out. Was that the only way you felt, or your organization felt that he could leave the mansion by having war from Fonchema 
coming from Fonchemann and the list of killing people in Fonchemann, coming down, passing Monrovia, going, coming to the other areas. And you still didn't get him out with the guns. I used to live in Fonchema. I didn't witness any killing of anybody in Fonchema. And the people of Fonchema can come here and attest to that. I used to live there. And nobody was killed in my presence there. And I even spent my own money, open school, for the children to go to school. Free education. What year? Yeah. And even what's the name of the school? Even one time the principal came to me and said, at least Mr. Chairman, send the school is free. Let the people pay registration fee. I said, nope. I will bring books for them. I will bring everything that you need. Don't bother nobody. And we're doing those things just to, you know, keep the children in school. And we wonder, everybody in Liberia knew that every other effort was made to get Chancellor out. It failed. And, and we wanted to come home. We were desperate. We were feeling comfortable. Nowhere but wanted to come back home. And that was the problem. And we're either by force or by peace. And we are home. Everybody is happy. Every Liberia is happy. And so, we are we're given a rousing welcome. And we should, be, we should be thankful. We raise our life to have all of you here today. No. Huh? It is a these are still regime. You will never come and sit here to do anything like this. Huh? And these are the things that we are fighting against. At least we are happy. You can come here and say what you want to say and go free. You can even say anything to the president. People being telling things against the president, and, to, and go home and sleep free. Uh, you know, so we are all happy. We have true democracy in this country. That shows to all that we have peace. Now we are working on reconciliation because there are other matters that people got to reconcile after war. People went against one another. People take people property. There is land dispute all over Liberia. Even myself being involved in land dispute in Pins Bay, a big problem. So those are some of the things we need to start working on now. And early already with the leadership, need to be thankful. Mr. We should be awarded. Now we're money, but we should be awarded in this country for bringing total peace and democracy in this country. And Please, we have fear. Mr. Thank Mr. You. You Mr. Damage, yeah. Mr. Kone, yeah, reconciliation with all justice, with all repentance, with all asking people for forgiveness, for killing all the peace that you say we have. Many people lost their mother, their father their children, their home, their property, while others just say, come here. So you say, as a result of the war, this is why we are sitting here. The purpose for us here to sitting here is to investigate. We the, go for that. Uh, we go for investigate that. We go what for that. Happened. And we are happy you are investigating. You see, what happened and to find it, the antecedent, what caused it, and what we should recommend. We're supposed to recommend amnesty, if they ask for forgiveness only, if people ask and, and qualify, and to recommend prosecution, but when there have been violation of international humanitarian law, on humanitarian law, certain things you don't do, we cannot give amnesty. So we want people to not say, we just come and people tell their story. But these are the facts, and especially those who say we should be happy, we really should be happy because we here. Yeah, but anybody and who there are other people who anybody who went against anybody can come here and call the person name, and the person should be invited to say why you did this to the person. It was not our duty, and we did not sanction that. And I was in part of that. You see, it's very clear. And the people were like, "We didn't bring missionaries to this country." And I told you, "Oh, and oh, in fact, I made a structure there, but I was very determined because we wanted to come back home." Every Liberian is that were a member of the LURD. And the people were very concerned. They wanted to come home. And you know, nobody could preach anything against Chast Chastela in this country. If you were here, nobody could say anything. So that was the, 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 the gun was the only thing that could say something that he could hear. Yeah, because it was a police state. People were ruling people with guns, so we got to come with guns. In your frank opinion on the Quran, do you convincingly can say that it was the gun that brought the peace to this country now? And your gun, Lord gun? I wish the gun was going to.
take Chasra from here. <laughs> uh, Chasra, who could take it from here? Nobody. Even the great United States couldn't take the men from here. They were not going to bring